Hi, I'm David with Stinger Equipment, and today I want to do a video on how to set up and calibrate the hopper for the gateway applicator. This is more for the small business owner, service manager, the technical person who sets up the calibrating your products and setting up how the machine is expected to run. I've went ahead and taken the liberty to speed up the process by installing the calibration kit. We've got the hopper gate extensions to slide the hopper forward. We've got the hopper extension cable to plug in the servos. And then we have our calibration bucket in this scale. The scale has to be set to pounds, not kilograms. Make sure it's in pounds and also make sure you zero it. The first thing you do in the calibration process or even setting up any machine is set up the min and max position. Use the feeler gauge that came with your calibration kit. So I'll take the screen out. I'll get my OneTouch app and I'll go ahead and log in, connect to the machine. Select the gear, go to hopper gate. Go ahead and start opening the left servo. Place my calibration key in the gap. You can see this moves forward and back. Press slightly forward just to hold it up and I'll start closing the gate using the app, doing minus 10, do minus 10 again. And I want this straight up and down, which is very light pressure, which it is. So now I have the min set, I'll hit set min on the app. Now we'll open it to 100%, put it in my key. And basically I'm just validating that it's there. So I can open it up and it's loose. I can tighten it. That's a little too tight. I'll go open. And now it's just snug. I can feel it rubbing. I'll hit set max. Now I'll go ahead and close it. I'll go to the other side. Start opening it up by hitting plus 10. I'll put my calibration key in. Press very slightly forward. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the minus 10. And you can see it moving. There's straight up and down. So that's set properly. I'll hit set min. Now I'll move it to 100%. Turn it 90 degrees. And it's because I've already calibrated before, it's set perfectly. I'll hit set max. Now I've went ahead and set the min and max position for the hopper gate. To validate it, I'll move them both to 50%. And I can look down at the top and they're set exactly the same where they should be. Now that we've set the min and max for the hopper gates to make every machine the same, let's go ahead and calibrate a material, but let's discuss why it's important. Every material is different in the way it flows through the hopper gate. With our ground metering process and the way the software works, we'll set a low, mid, and high calibration point and every single material is different. Even two materials that look the same from different manufacturers have different flow rates. So we'll go ahead and run the calibration process for each material. We can save it to the cloud in our phone, give it a custom name, and pull it up at a later date. So we have our material that we're gonna run through the spreader. When you go to do a calibration, make sure you get a brand new bag of material, not something that's been open, that's got moisture in it. If you use a bag that's been sitting around for a couple of days, it's absorbed moisture and it will flow differently. It'll flow slower, which is detrimental to your calibration process. So always start with a brand new bag of material, which is that's what this is. I have it in a bucket. I'm gonna dump in the whole 50 pounds. I'll grab my app, make sure I'm still connected, which I am. I'll go into spreader and I'm gonna go ahead and set up the spreader using the app. So I'm gonna set up preset one. In the previous video, we did the spray and we set up for an eight foot spacing. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna go into the app and the rate. I'll check it, it's at three pounds. I'm gonna set my max at five pounds and my min at three pounds. And I'll hit backspace. It's changed, so I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna go into my wide. There's my spacing eight foot, which matches my spray, that's right. My narrow is at four feet, which matches my spray. I'll hit right and save. And now down at the very bottom is my dispense rate calibration. This is kind of like the fingerprint of the material. This material is a prill size of 240. So I'll go ahead and select prill, medium, 200 to 260. Hit back arrow. And then I have a low, mid, and high calibration rate. So let me go ahead and save this. I'll go into, I'll select low. I've got everything set. My scales are at zero, they're zeroed out. I've got my bucket in place. I'm gonna hit dispense. It's automatically dispensing. I'm taking a close look and making sure the material is flowing even and consistently. I don't wanna see it starting and stopping, especially at the low rate. So I'll dispense this for 30 to 45 seconds, maybe a minute, depending on how slow it is. But what I like seeing is, you know, three or four pounds of material in the bucket. 
and the whole time I'm watching this looking for any inconsistencies. It should have a nice constant flow pattern, which it does. All right, so we'll go ahead and stop. We'll hit dispense a second time. It stops, it ran for 35.2 seconds. I've got 4.08 pounds of material. I'll type in 4.08, put it in the app. I have a flow rate of 6.95 pounds per minute. I'll hit back arrow, I'll hit right and save. Now I have a calibration point for the low. I gotta do this three times. So now I'll select mid rate. Make sure it's on zero, my bucket's in place. I hit dispense. One, mid and high position, I'm not really worried about flow rate. I'm still looking at it for any chunks of material that might be in there. But really the only time it ever stops and starts and stops with a chunk is at the low rate because it's such a small opening. At the mid and high point, it doesn't really matter because it's always consistent, but you're still watching it. So I'll put three or four pounds, I'm already there. I'm gonna hit dispense and hit stop. It ran for 21.4 seconds. I've got 4.86 pounds. I've got 13.63 for my flow rate. I'll hit back arrow, I'll hit save, and it's saved. So now we have the high rate that we have to do. Take my material, dump it back in, place my bucket back, make sure my scales are still in pound and still at zero, it is. I'll hit the high rate, hit dispense, and you'll see it's even going faster the third time. So again, it's gonna go really fast. I'm looking for constant even flow, which it has. I'm looking at my scales. I'll probably put in five pounds this time. I'll hit dispense and hit stop. It ran for 15 seconds. It put in 5.62 pounds, which I'll enter it. Now I've got 22.48 pounds per minute. I'll hit back, hit save. And I'll dump my material back in. That's how easy it is to set up the, uh, to get the hopper gate calibration for that material. Everything saved under preset one. So the only thing we have left to do is go ahead and run this outside and validate the width, just like we discussed for the spray. So we'll go in and make sure that we're spreading. In here we say eight feet, but really we know that's eight foot spacing between passes. So we're gonna spread on the wide, 16 feet wide. That gives us a 50% flow rate or double coverage. And we'll go in and validate the impeller speed for the narrow setting where we want to spread four feet wide. I personally like four feet because that's six inches past the width of the front tire. The material should land about here. So visually driving it, the operator can say, hey, I'm gonna throw the material six inches past the width of the tire, which is a very easy way to do. So when you're doing your trim, you get a nice consistent, nice clean edge and you're not wasting material or having to go back to clean it up. So we've got it calibrated. I'll go in and go ahead and save this calibration to the cloud. I'll select the upper right hand corner, three buttons with three dots with the three lines. I'll put in calibration. I could put a description. I'm gonna skip it. I'll hit save and share. It'll take about five seconds, save it to the cloud. Configuration saved. Now I can go there and confirm it's there. Go into my configurations, spread presets. Go down to the, pile, the bottom and there's calibration. We just went through the entire calibration process. We set the min and max for the hopper gate openings for the left and right. We calibrated our product. We did the low, mid, and high calibration points, and we saved it to the cloud. The last step of this process is to go outside and validate the width. There's one thing I haven't covered, and that's the uh, yellow cone on the front. The yellow cone adjusts the uh, spread pattern right and left. So if you're going through with your wide spread pattern and you get a little bit more to the one side than the other, if it's heavy to the right and you want to shift your spread pattern to the left, just press it to the left. If you're too heavy to the left and you want to shift it right, just shift it to the right. When I do this, I always start, especially with a medium prill, I'll set it in the middle on number five and then I'll adjust it from there. Now I'm going to confirm my wide spread pattern. I'm going to drive down the center. It should spread eight feet to the right, eight feet to the left. If it doesn't, if it's a little wide, I can go in and adjust the impeller speed to slow it down to bring it in. If it's a little narrow, I can increase the impeller speed to widen it up. The software is going to deliver exactly the right amount of material, and now it's my responsibility to make sure the spread pattern is what we told the software that it's going to be. If it's a little heavy to the right, we could discussed earlier, you can take the cone on the front, the yellow spreader cone, and shift the pattern right and left as well. So go ahead and get this dialed in so that when your employees are using it, they're always spreading back to the center of their last pass and your calibrations will be spot on. Let's go ahead and check it.
So the spread pattern was spot on, just like I expect it to be. But if it was off, I could easily adjust it, go through a couple times until you get it exactly the way you want it. Now we're gonna go through and validate the narrow spread pattern. When I hit the narrow button, it should go ahead and bring it from 16 feet wide down to four feet, six inches past each of the front tires. This will be 100% coverage used for trimming in a property for a hard edge. Let's go ahead and test it. That looks good. It's spread exactly the width that I want it. You can set up every machine via the cloud using Bluetooth with the app to where everyone's exactly the same.